Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a look at the impact of the emergence from the pandemic. We're facing a renewed sense of optimism in the economy with signs of dropping case counts for new infections. We have states like Texas and Mississippi fully opening their economies and dropping mask mandates completely. But the path from A to B is rarely a straight line. Some of the dropping case counts represent a false sense of security. A small but growing proportion of these cases are the so-called mutant variants that have a higher rate of transmission. The UK variant is nearly 50% more transmissible than the original SARS-CoV-2 and represents a fast-growing percentage of the new cases. It only took a few months in the UK for the new variant to become the dominant strain of the virus. So while the current case counts are dropping, the new variants represent a threat to the pandemic recovery. Now, there's no question that the emergence from the pandemic will vary widely from one geographic region to the next. Cities that have a high exposure to travel and hospitality, like Las Vegas, will experience a protracted recovery. Even if governments were to throw the gates wide open tomorrow, it's going to take time before the public at large regains confidence to travel en masse for vacations. 2021 will continue to be a second year of socially distanced, driving distance vacations. Friends of mine who have taken recent trips report less than 25 passengers on aircraft capable of carrying 150. The rate of vaccination is another major variable. As of the first week of March, some states in the U.S. report less than 15 doses of the vaccine per 100 population. Other states are north of 37%. These differences will also vary widely from one country to the next. Israel has led the world in terms of vaccine rollout. So far, 85% of those over age 60 have been vaccinated, and 40% of those between age 16 and 59 have been vaccinated. Recent reports from earlier this week from Israel show that COVID-19 infection rates for those who have been vaccinated in Israel are as low as 1 in 1,500. If these results are mirrored elsewhere in the world, the outlook for an end to the pandemic is promising. But it's going to take a long time before the rest of the world catches up to Israel. President Biden made a bold claim that enough doses will be available in the U.S. to fully inoculate the population by May. So far, as of March the 3rd, the U.S. has administered 23 doses of vaccine per 100 people. In Canada, that number is much lower, at 5 doses per 100 people. A recently published economic and real estate outlook from Marcus and Millichap forecasts population migration over the next four years. The top growth cities will be Dallas, Austin, Houston, Atlanta, Phoenix, Charlotte, and Raleigh. This is partly a continuation of the trend over the past five years. The pandemic has accelerated things. But some of the top growth cities over the past five years also dropped off the list. Washington, Orlando, Seattle, and Tampa are no longer on that highest growth list. They're moved down to the middle of the list of cities that are growing. The bottom of the list, there are those forecast to continue to lose population, including New York City, New Haven, Detroit, Cleveland, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. There were a few warning signs for investors in hospitality. Of course, the hotel industry has been hammered in 2020 due to the pandemic. There's a lot of new supply under construction in 2020 that could not have foreseen the pandemic or its impact. Four markets stand out with more than 9% of their existing inventory representing rooms under construction. Those four cities are Nashville, Austin, San Jose, and New York. Ten markets have between 6 to 9% of their existing inventory under construction. And such a large increase in supply coming online in a short period of time leaves an uncertain future for hotels in those markets. Those second tier, those ten markets are Portland, Salt Lake City, Denver, Savannah, Oklahoma City, Jacksonville, Columbus, Ohio, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Southeast Florida, the Miami area, and Detroit. Detroit was a surprise. Hotel occupancy was 45% for the year, and currently about 20% of hotels nationwide are in default on their loans. But lenders appear to be working with hotel operators, and the number of forced transactions remains small at the moment. Industry metrics are showing that people still don't feel safe to travel. In fact, Many nations continue to actively discourage travel in order to stop the spread of infection. Measures include mandatory quarantine in government hotels. Non-essential travel is outright banned in some countries. And forecasts are suggesting that domestic travel won't return to pre-pandemic patterns until 2022 and 
maybe as long as 2024 for international travel. Not surprisingly, hotels and Sunbelt destinations have fared better than those in most other areas. The lone exception is Hawaii, where hotel occupancy is one of the lowest across the U.S. The five worst performing markets for hotel and leisure were New York, Boston, Chicago, Seattle, and San Francisco. All of those markets show declines in revenue per available room in excess of 65% compared with 2019. So as you think about that, if you're hoping to take a vacation this summer, better book that chalet by the lake because they're booking up fast. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.